before we get into it, can you just let the people know, what is a black hole? Black hole is a region of space where matter has condensed to such a high density that the gravity at its surface, the surface gravity, is so high that you cannot escape it, even at the speed of light. You are forever trapped. It is the fabric of the space-time continuum warped back on itself. And once you fall in, you are never coming out. It is the human version of the Roach Motel. <laughs> you check in, but you don't check out. A black hole. That's why we call them black. And when you fall and you don't come out, that's why we call it a hole. Because we tell it like it is in astrophysics. Black hole. <laughs> Spin that wheel. Daniel Junius wants to know, what happens when we fall into a black hole? Ooh, you want to avoid that, first of all. Never, don't do that. Neither at home or at work or anywhere else. But if you happen to fall in a black hole, which is my preferred form of death, it's better than getting hit by a bus, right? So if you've fallen in a feet first dive to this cosmic abyss, you will not survive because you will not miss. The tidal forces of gravity will create quite a calamity when you're stretched head to toe. Are you sure you wanna go? Those tidal forces will increase to the point where your body will just snap in two likely at the base of the spine. Then each of those two pieces will snap into two. So you become one to two to four to eight to 16 until you bifurcate all the way down to the center of the black hole. And you become a stream of atoms. And that's not even the worst part. The worst part is you are funneled, extruded through the fabric of space-time so that you used to be this wide, now you're this narrow. And so this phenomenon, this, this extrusion like toothpaste through a tube, we have a word for it. Death by black hole is called spaghettification. Spaghettification sounds like a meal to die for. <laughs> see what I did there? Kill me. We see all this activity in the center of the galaxy, stars orbiting a big dark area. Right. How do we know it's not just like the center of a hurricane? And the reason why we know that is because cause what we learned from Kepler and later Newton is the orbit that you have is the speed of your orbit is completely determined by the mass that's sitting inside your orbit. Uh -huh. The mass around which you revolve. Right. So what you say is here are these things I can see how fast they're moving run back to Kepler's equation and say there must be a mass a, a huge, huge mass a huge mass like right. Bigger than the size of the orbit. Wow. Wait, wait. And then you say, but wait a minute. We don't know anything that's that massive that's smaller than the orbit except for a, a black, black hole. hole. Gotcha. Okay. So in other words, if it was a star with that much mass, it would be huge, huge. or, or right. some other thing. And you'd right. see it. You'd see it. Right. You'd see a glowing thing. Gotcha. This is dark and it has huge mass and it's small. Mm. That's three smoking guns right there. Right. Implicating... A supermassive black hole. Supermassive black hole. Yes. That's... And, and our black hole is less massive than the one in the center of the Andromeda galaxy, our nearest big galaxy. Do we have black hole envy? Well, I think we do. Yeah, yeah, some <laughs> black hole. <laughs> so, but we're talking about hundreds of millions of times the mass of the sun. But it's a black hole, so it's small for that much mass. Wow. And so that's why. Oh, so, so we do it for our galaxy, then we do it for our neighboring galaxy. Man, it's such Wait a, a minute. Go ahead. And we can't, no, other galaxies are far away, so ground based telescopes, you can't see it, so we send up Hubble. Mm -hmm. And so we say, well, if we have it, and we're not really a special galaxy in, in, the, in the universe, mm -hmm. and Andromeda has it, mm -hmm. our nearest neighbor, maybe, this is astronomy, astronomy think. These two galaxies have it. Maybe every galaxy has it. Right. Okay? Because why should we be special? Right. It's called the Copernican principle. You're probably not special. Right. <laughs> exactly. Copernicus, better known as my father. <laughs> not so special. I don't know what you think, but go ahead. Your father interacting with you. Exactly. Yeah, okay, thank you. <laughs> so so you, we, we hypothesize that maybe all galaxies have black holes. So you invoke Hubble, who can see farther away galaxies, mm -hmm. and measure the movements of stars down deep in the middle, and they were moving fast too. Right. And every next galaxy, and so we've now done enough 
we're just re resigned to the fact that every right. galaxy's got a black. Even some of the smaller galaxies that might not have, they got black holes. They still too. have black holes, right? So no, we haven't seen, we haven't measured every one of the hundred billion galaxies in the universe. But every galaxy we measured, the big ones, the small ones, right. the it's like the, taking a poll. Yeah, except even better, right? Because the universe doesn't have weird people living in right. <laughs> back roads <laughs> who think weird stuff. <laughs> Gotcha. Well, actually, it might. The universe could have some weird galaxy that we've never discovered before. Right. Every galaxy that fits into a category of galaxies that we've observed, it's got a black hole of different masses. And the more massive the, the entire galaxy, right. then the more massive the black hole is. Gotcha. Yeah, there's some that have billions of times the mass of the sun Damn. as a black hole sitting in the middle. Wow. Yeah. Da -da -ling, ding, 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 <laughs> ding. We got to stop for a second because yeah. I got I to gotta understand something here. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta understand something. All right? Yeah. Okay. All right. So here's the deal. What you're saying is everything that is Chuck goes into the black hole. So yeah. as you want to reconstruct recreate or reconstruct the circumstance or anything about me that right. before I'm in there. But now that I'm in there, okay, right. what comes out, which would be the Hawking radiation and the evaporation of the black hole. That's what's coming out. But what's coming out is really nothing to do with, it's, it's not, not a representation. Out. It's not coming out. It's not, it's not yeah. a representation of me. It's materializing yeah. as opposed to exiting. And so since it's materializing as, as opposed to exiting, yeah. then what comes out is not necessarily related to me that went in. It's even worse than that. Oh, the radiation, <laughs> oh sorry. The radiation. <laughs> oh, oh God. You radiation. got me. You got me. I'm like, oh, damn. The, the radiation was never inside the black hole ever. That's what I'm saying. So what's it's just, happening, poof. it doesn't come out. So what happens is, there are these little quantum fluctuations that happen in empty space okay. that are allowed because of uncertainty. Because uncertainty says you cannot precisely say a particle is there precisely, infinitely precisely. You also cannot say it's not there. Okay, so, so is that the uncertainty, uncertainty principle that you were that's talking about? That's the uncertainty yes. principle. So that, that creates the possibility that particles just kind of create. So, kind so of it's popping out of thin air. Out. Oh, wait, there's no air popping in space. Popping out of it's thin popping, space. It's popping out of thin air. Thin space. Thin, thin space. Thin, empty space. And what happens is the black hole, so they have to come in pairs, because if you think about empty space, it, you know, it, ha it has to be also just completely bland and featureless. So I can't have an electron appearing, right? because it has charge and it has spin and it has all these properties. It has to come with a pair that cancels its charge and it neutralizes it completely. We, we call it neutralizing all its quantum numbers. So it has to come in pairs. And then it can go in and out of the vacuum and just creates a kind of quantum froth that we never notice. Wait, wait, what just the to be black clear, hole that does, paired particle is antimatter, right. just to be clear. So right, it would be an antimatter particle, but you could also have it with two photons or mm -hmm. two, two bundles of light, which the photon is its own antiparticle. Right, okay. oh my God. Uh, so the electron has a positron. So the electron and the positron can be created and then disappear. Light can be created. Any, any particle that exists in the universe has these fluctuations that we don't notice. It's happening in this room. It's just very, very, very low level we don't know but the black hole what it does is it steals one of the partners doesn't matter which right. one it steals one of the pair and then the other one can't go back to nothing because it's not neutralized by its pair it just sits there so suddenly so, this just... particle emmet leaves and comes out of what seems like thin air thin empty space and that's the hawking radiation so it never originated inside the black hole it was stolen so therefore wait, wait, what are you wait, saying wait, wait, wait however go ahead wait 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 wait, wait. oh my god this is insane <laughs> okay. it's insane, okay. it's insane. Okay. Wait, wait, it is. Wait, wait, it's insane. Wait, wait. that's why hawking was so famous because okay. it was wait. like insane jenna yeah jenna so let me make things nice, okay? <laughs> I can't have Chuck lose a brain gasket here because I need him for other shows. Okay. You said early at the beginning that the event horizon is not some wall. It's just space moves sm smoothly through and across yeah. the event horizon. You yeah. said that, correct? Okay. Yeah. Now, the curved space-time shape Mm -hmm. is made by the black hole, correct? Yep. So every place that feels this curvature mm -hmm. is basically part of the footprint of this black hole 
on the fabric of space and time. So if I'm going to make a Hawking particle pair Mm -hmm. outside of the event horizon from Mm -hmm. the gravitational energy of the black hole itself, Mm -hmm. why won't you allow me to say, I am using the black hole identity to make Mm -hmm. this happen? I will allow you to say that, but the only identity, the only feature from outside the black hole, this is why the whole featureless aspect is so profound. The only feature you can know about the black hole from outside because of the event horizon is its mass, its electric charge, and its spin, if it spins like the Earth. And those are the only three things you can know about the black hole. So, so, Any other information is occluded by the event horizon. All right, so, so... So you will reflect in the radiation the mass, the spin, and the charge. But you won't reflect that Chuck fell in, that he right. screamed, you know, somebody's name. Okay, so I can, I can, I recon- can, all of that's gone. I can reconstruct his particles, perhaps. No, honey, you can't reconstruct even his quantum, no features about his quantum numbers are knowable. You, wait, wait, you're telling me Ch- Chuck has, has 80 gazillion um, neutrons made of quarks. Now, mm-hmm. coming out the other side, will I get that same number of Quark so that the, make so, neutrons? So the the hope is okay, so so if you just look at Hawking's original calculation, he said no, you won't. You won't. And that's what initiated the whole crisis. So wait a minute, wait a minute, because wait a minute. Wait, quantum whoa. theorists said that's not possible. So so and the so, deal so is there, this. Yeah. If, yeah. If, if if what Neil just asked is the case and you're saying no, mm-hmm. right, then are we saying that there's a that there's a theft of information? Is there a loss of information? That's that's what Hawking suggested. And then there became this big fight. So I would say right now, if you talk to people like Lenny Susskind, who has a great book um, called Black Hole Wars, where he talks about trying to make the universe safe from Stephen Hawking, <laughs> you know, they would say they figured out a way to encode the information, the Hawking radiation. So, so I would say right now, the Hawking um, eventually kind of started to say, okay, maybe you quantum guys are onto something and maybe there's a sneaky, sneaky way that the black hole emits information, but it's no mean feat. And one of the craziest suggestions for how the black hole allows information to escape is to say that there are wormholes that connect the interior of the black hole to the exterior of the black hole. And so the Hawking radiation, which never came from inside the black hole, is actually the the same particle as lived in Chuck's body. And it was navigated by a wormhole to the outside. So, so it basically tunnels out. Oh, basically. it tunnels out. That's, okay, so, so come it on. sounds like, Janet, it sounds like that's they cheating. had the same reaction that Chuck did. <laughs> You're cheating. They said, guys, we got to fix this. We can't We can't that's live that's with right. this it's phenomenon. Let's that's make right. something up. Right. Let's pull something that's out right. of our ass. Right. Let's pull a, pull right. a wormhole out of our ass that's so that we right. don't have to blow our own gasket. Yeah. Just that's Chuck exactly did. what happened. But it's actually had really successful ideas. So then you start, it gets even worse because if you imagine all of these wormholes entangling every single one of Chuck's particles with a particle on the outside, that means that Neil, you you or your descendants could reconstruct from fire what happened to Chuck, what he said, what his last moments were like, but what also oh, happened we, we is know that- what, We know what I said. Here's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> oh shit! Shit! <laughs> yeah, we don't need we don't need wormholes to know that. Right, we don't need, all right. Right. It's still fun to hear. So, so the wormholes, what they end up doing is they create like stitching, quantum stitching. So imagine like embroidery. So imagine I embroider an image of a black hole. It's really made up of tons of stitches. And when I look closely, I realize that there is no black hole there. It's just made up of tons of stitches. And that's actually one of the ideas that's coming out that's most radical is that the black hole is made by these quantum entangled wormholes. That that is what the event horizon is. It is like cross-hatched quantum phenomena, and if I could see closely on the quantum level, I would realize the black hole emerges as an illusion out of quantum mechanics. And that might be true for all of gravity, that it's actually it's actually something that is fundamentally uh, illusory and really is just a quantum phenomenon that we didn't recognize. All you know? this because they didn't want to lose information. The, what, what, they, they, what's, what, what sore losers they are. <laughs> <laughs> it's, we got we, we to take another break.